Okay, hello everybody and happy home day. It's Woman Crush Wednesday and you're watching Trending at Say. Listen, we were cold today in Johannesburg. Tell us what the weather's like where you are watching us across the country. And we are coming to you live on SABC3. Now, we're not live streaming tonight. The cold froze all of our data. It froze all of our, what is that blue wire connectivity in the cables? What is it called? It's Absolutely. It's frozen, yeah. Yeah, that thing. So it's out on three. You can still tag us on social media. Yes, it's called Fiber. Somebody has just told me the voice of Zola has just thank told you, me, Zola. so thank you. Uh, all right, so it's been quite a day teeming with trending hashtags, and for the next hour, we're going to do what we do best. We're gonna unpack all of those trending hashtags that got you in the mix, RTing, liking, posting, screen grabbing, the wax. Of course, we are never alone. We specialize in body heat. The heat comes on my right. She's our absolute fave with the files. The heat files. The heat and files make Cooley Roberts. Yeah. Hello, darlings. Hello, darlings. Hello, darlings. Nee, nee, nee. Do you see the heat? Mom, mom, mom. And also feet. What one? Yeah. Actually, how are we? You're trying to rap right now. Are you pulling Okay, a, so what's Nicole? on your side? Okay. Savagery, darling, that's what's on my timeline. It's savagery. People are out here shading each other, even in the Lord's house. Tonight's savagery is a good day, and it's all about celebrity. Yeah, female celebrities like attacking each other. It's fabulous. You must stay tuned. Mm. Next door to her is our in house doc, Otela. He said to us, No, ladies, you can wear your coats, ladies. It's okay, ladies, because me, I'm Dr. Feel Good. <laughs> I'm warm enough as I am. I'm Dr. Musa Matombeni. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha. Please, just because it's cold doesn't mean no. Please, man. Even the fiber is frozen. Every, no, but listen, there's no winter in Milano, so you know Ooh. you must, you must just always, guys. You must. Uh, wow. Tell us about that. I mean, it's another snack. It's another. It's charcuterie, babes. I mean. But tell me quickly. On. So how many tablecloths have you cut up to make these ties? I may look. I buy it in bulk. I buy ten meters at a time. So <laughs> my underwear next week will be all be floral. Don't worry. Charcuterie. Coordinating. Coordinating. All right, darling. Uh, charcuterie. Tell us what is on your timeline. Well, the thing we'll be checking out on my timeline today is hashtag one of my favorite things is and hashtag sundowns basa and of course Petrus Mutsipa popped up on my feed today. So I'll be unpacking those hashtags a little bit later nice one now this is a lady who sometimes is from siberia but actually is from <laughs> serviette, serviette <laughs> which is a country just here you see in the world and you're looking at oh where's your serviette oh there it is where nina comes from nina hasty everybody yes. <laughs> yummy that's right Bobby. Mm. hi i'm warm yeah you? Ooh, you oh warm that there? day you are hot yeah, no, no, that. In fact, uh, the heat that's on set right now is actually just emitting from this image. Of course. Uh, wow. What I like is what you, what you wrote about, about uh, growth. Um, and how this show and your growth has all coincided. I mean, you're, you're an incredible woman. Mm. Thanks for sharing Thank that with us. Thank you. You make me feel like You inspire us, Lila. Um, What's on your timeline, Nina? So, Papa Rubber, uh, tonight, in other news. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at a hashtag that has divided music lovers worldwide, all right? I'm going to drop my smile now because this thing makes me angry, all right? It's Newt R. Kelly. Over a decade of rumors and allegations of sexual misconduct against R. Kelly, people are now saying <sighs> stop supporting his music. And I'm going to Finally. That. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Hello, everybody. I'm also very warm. And this is my cravat that is also a duke that can also be put around here if I get cut. Oh. And Cooley Roberts gave it to me on the oh. journey cruise. Yes. yes. Hello. Oh, I also have a name. My name is Bobby Malloy. Hi. Lala, what is that statue when I'm when I'm That is the statue awarded to those whose team members hold her up no, no, no. to be the best talk show host. Oh, because without my. team members, and. there is no talk are you, on this show. Are you naked in that picture? So, yes. Sis. Bobby, doing zenza. It's that poor statue. A <laughs> <laughs> what you doing? <clears throat> with my statue. Our woman crush Wednesday guest is Tubsy. Tubsy! You know who? 
rating with artists like Cuesta, and tonight we get to know the voice behind some of the best dance floor hits. We aren't live to post any of your questions for Tubsy, but we won't see them, but post them anyway. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. The hashtag to use is start on three. We are trending essay on SABC3 on Twitter. BRB, babies. Now we dance. Hey, hey, hey! Calafas. She's like it. Did you try to give him the heart that it was to coordinate the hand at the same time? Oh, wow. Listen, I don't know what happened to us now that we're broadcasting at midnight, but hello! Welcome <laughs> to Training Essay on SABC3. Um, yeah, sure. It's so good to have you with us on our nighttime situation. Musa, what have you got for us tonight, Doc? You know what's going on. It's those SMS love. It hours. is! Yes! Love hours. 
they're doing things to us. <sighs> anyway, first up on the trends was the hashtag, one of my favorite things is tweets took to Twitter to share their most favorite things in life. And not everyone was playing ball with this hashtag, but rather sharing some of the ridiculous items that they think are their favorite. This one from Brandon saying, one of my favorite things is spelling favorite like an American. Yeah. Hello. Without the U, like favorite. Yeah. A weird on that one. And then, of course, another one here from Cameron Grant saying one of my favorite things is sneaking in tweets while I am at work. What a nerd. I think a lot of us do this. Well, uh, we never one. do that on th at this work. Yeah, no, we, we don't do We that. were sneaking work while we are tweeting. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Another one here coming through from Katzi saying one of my favorite things, writing letters to companies and items knowing I'll never send them, but enjoying getting anger uh, off my chest to describe my feelings for each situation. That's very good. Aww. Dear frozen yogurt. Hey, mama. You have broken my heart. I'm joking. I love this guy, by the way, Ron. I Swanson. love him. He is the best. All right. And uh, that is that with these ones. But to be fair, there were tweets who did share some non-ridiculous tweets with this hashtag. Starting things off with Saeed Abdul Razak, who shared his favorite thing. And this was it. Saying, one of my favorite things, watching all the episodes of Friends again. Yes. Yes. Da -da. No one told you life was going to be this way. <laughs> Your job's a joke. You're broke. Your love life's DOA. It's Wait. like you're always stuck in second gear. Yeah. When it hasn't been your, your day, day, your week, week your, your month, month, or even your year. But I'll be there for you when the race starts to fall. I'll be there for okay. you. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Like I've been right. there before. If you know that song, well. you were definitely born in 1980-something. Mm -hmm. Now, we are going to move on to other things and check out another tweet. This one here coming through from Gratel Armstrong saying one of my favorite things is seeing a baby smile. Look at oh, this. boy. Look at this cutie pie. He's so cute. Yes. Ladies, what are your favorite things that brighten your day, especially oh. today? Seeing the four of you happy, where I, I watch you, I watch your handle, I check your timelines, and if you're celebrating on Twitter, so wherever you are, I love seeing you Just guys happy. The four of us, who else? I'm including myself. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Including I myself. Oh, la, 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 la. oh Kulia, you're looking pretty. Yeah, baby. <laughs> and I retweet myself. <laughs> you I love cats. What I realized today, yes. like everything is okay. Mm. Yes. Everything is as it should be and everything's okay. Yes, and the universe is conspiring to help you. At all times. Mm. I saw positivity today. Yeah. Like I've had a hectic couple of weeks of yes. just bad thing after bad thing. After, but today for the first time I was like, turn that frown upside down. Nice. Yes, so, Musa. How much we love Moving you. on to another hashtag, and the hashtag was Sundowns Barca, and Petrus Mutsipe heated up my feet today because sports fans were excited all over the country because of the Nelson Mandela uh, Centenary Cup between the Spanish Giants Barcelona as well as the PSL champion Sundowns. And if you don't already know, the game ended and the final score was 3-1 to Sun... No, no, I'm joking. To Barcelona. It could have been worse, babe. I mean, it's still worth a, it's still worth a clap. Well done, guys. Well Done, guys, yeah, can I tell you what I enjoyed about watching that game? I was just waiting for the final whistle because all the Sundowns guys were hanging around Messi towards the end of the game so the that they could get his T-shirt afterwards. See, they would but, have done but, better but if they weren't such fans. Can, can someone uh, balance me quick? Don't you uh, swap shirts with the person in your position? No. Your, your, your counterpart? Yes. No, in the past it used to be like that. Now it's just whoever you want to go swap shirts what? with. What? Mm. Swap with the keeper, swap with the cleaner, whoever you want. Well, building up to the game, tweets, of course, on Twitter were all over and they were jumping over the moon with the big names from Barcelona that were coming over to SA to start playing these games. I'm gonna start things off with showing you some of these trees. This one from Kingdom Boss Man who said, I'm literally breathing the same geographical air as Messi right now. So emotional. So sweet. So emotional. Yo, yo, yo. And, and then, then people course, shouted us for loving Beyonce so much. You know. I don't understand. It's kind of childish. What don't you understand? It's the same thing. So why is it irrational when we love Beyonce so much and you are there crying on a yeah, when people people probably did cry. I won't even lie. Yeah. All right, let's check out the next one. This one came through from Joe Cran, who says Petrus Mutsipe has made a lot of people very happy by bringing Barcelona and Messi to South Africa. That has to be applauded. Tonight will be a highlight of the year for a lot of people at FNB Stadium. Nicely done. And I'm sure a lot of you are happy. And it is. Of course, like how we South Africans love doing it, customary, of course. Messi was blessed with a new name. His new name was this e from Zolitini. E e e Melusi. 
<laughs> is now Messi's new name Aww. in South Africa. So well done to you. But of course, opinions over us hosting the game were divided. According to reports and Twitter, it's alleged that Sundown's boss, Petrus Mutepe, paid a whopping 105 million rand. Yo. to bring Missy Donna and company to South Africa. But there were conflicting reports over this, of course, uh, about how much was actually spent. Some tweets went up over. They were angry. They were fighting. And ASAP started things off saying this one. Chief of Wakanda. So, Mutipe paid 100 million for Barcelona to come and play here. Mm. 100 million. That money could have helped with youth development, fix old stadiums, build sports grounds instead of we waste. Okay. Another one here coming through from Iron Duke saying, why doesn't Petrus Mutipe give it to the poor? Why must he pay 105 to Barca? Majority of people saying this uh, wouldn't give one cent to the poor if they had 105. Wow. Very valid point. So I'm sure you know that people always fight like this. And then there are those that are going to defend the people that are doing these acts. And Mr. Mutipe was defended by Jessica D and others. And this is what Jessica had to say. Underqualified Twitter financial advisors are <laughs> at it again. Mutsepe has an entire bursary scheme for university students. Mm -hmm. does plenty of charity work. You should be inspired. Another one coming through from uh, Shaista saying that thousands of people would have never gotten the chance to see this Barcelona team in the flesh, but Petrus Mutsepe made that happen for South Africa. Wow. And then another one from Silo M saying Mutsepe is a joint member of the Giving Pledge founded by Buffet. Uh, by Fitz. By Fitz. By Fitz. <laughs> And Gates for Bursaries. Mutipe Foundation has a beneficiary of 222 schools and churches, which he has donated up to 35 million and 40 million to the ABC Mutipe League. <coughs> you all want people to do with the money. What do you want people to do with their money? Huh? Huh? What do you guys think he should have done with the money? I yeah. think he's done exactly the right thing. He gives enough to people already. So do what you want. It's your money. Yeah, absolutely. And there's something really important about having this kind of um, celebration. Mm. You know, the centenary of Nelson Mandela's name and legacy. There's a reason why the spotlight is on us at the moment. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to sound like one of those people in the comment section of a certain website, but... <laughs> <laughs> I also just kind of feel that, like with any business that attracts uh, positivity to our economy, I mean, you see, you watch these news channels and it's like, invest in Turkey, mm. invest in Serbia. You know, there's, there's ways and means of creating an attractive investment environment for a country as a whole. Mm -hmm. And this is one of those activities that I think kills a few uh, birds with one stone. Exactly. So, you know how we're always saying how much we love South Africa? Yeah. Okay. And you know we're saying it like a bit tongue in cheek, ne? Of like, course. Oh, only in Mzanzi. Well, only in Mzanzi can this happen. There's a photograph making the rounds on social media of a taxi driver who used newspaper cuttings <laughs> in replacement of a licensed disc, and this <laughs> mofo got away with it for the longest time. You saw that. I mean, it's innovation, sure. <laughs> Illegal, absolutely. But oh. only in Mzanzi. There we go. Guys, you're shocking. The accounts ask uh, the chief JMPD posted that this is common practice with taxi drivers. What? I see even airtime receipts serve oh, as licensed yeah. disc. Um, Landuza, sometimes. What's wrong with you people? That Come is on. Just, Impunity I, is not cool. Mm. No, I know. Look, look guys. Um, I saw this playing out on social media, and it made me think of other disturbing taxi moments. I, I mean, I know these are cute, and it's funny, and we laugh. No. But I, look at this. This is a wrecked up taxi doing business as usual. Um, but this is not, this is on a freeway. Don't laugh, this, this, this is the type of vehicle that is carrying our mothers and our grandmothers and the people that we rely on and that are the pillar of our entire community causing accidents. And you know, ah, oh, Judith, you were late to work again. Stop laughing, Lindani, it's not funny. It's it not is funny. an accident. It's actually but you know, accident. you know, sometimes we laugh because it's actually just overwhelming. Mm, like yeah, there's so I mean, much KAK mm. that you eventually just have to go <laughs> out. <laughs> Disbelief as well. It's disbelief. That is a much more eloquent way of putting disbelief. it. Disbelief. Okay, so there we go. Please, please, we beg of you, keep the roads safe. Please. To the Department of Transport, the taxi industry, please 
keep the roads safe. I mean, breadwinners' lives, children's lives are all at stake. It's the guy they're holding our people to ransom yeah. because they know that the commuters can't complain. Exactly. Because they want to... They, they there is to no them. alternative. So oh. please, 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 let's be safe. All right, we're going to go take an ad break and we're going to fix this cravat. Can and we dance? Come back. Can we dance? Yes. What is it called? She told me she loving my lifestyle. I'm young and I'm living my life now. Lifestyle, yeah, my lifestyle, yeah, my lifestyle is a vibe now. Lifestyle, yeah, my lifestyle, yeah, my Hey. I what that is. Sorry. I don't know what we're doing. I don't know ever what we're doing. I just know that we are on SABC3 and this is Trending SA with Musa, Siskuli Roberts, Nina Hasty and Bobby Molloy. Um, and we are live on SABC3. We are on social media in terms of tweeting and uh, getting your tweets, but we're not streaming tonight. So uh, just if you were one of those streamists, make sure that you come on the team. An extremist! Okay? <laughs> I like it, Nina. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Don't forget, later on the show, we have the very, very talented Tab C, who's going to be joining us, so stick around for that. It's time for our regular feature now called <coughs> In Other News. Oh, thanks, Bobby. Ooh. In Other News, today we spotlight 
hashtag mute R Kelly, um, which was mute R Kelly, which was trending recently. And no, it weren't a promo for the new music by the Pied Piper. It's a campaign <laughs> was started in 2017 by two African American women, Kenyette Barnes and Orine Kai Odelay. Lay. Um, <laughs> check here. The woman was shocked by the report um, that broke out last year. Uh, this is very serious, guys. Don't be laughing at my accent. Um, <laughs> when a claim about R. Kelly that he had... Okay, listen. This Thank is you. Serious stuff. This is Thank serious. You. serious. Okay. <laughs> this is what happened. R. Kelly had formed a sex cult, so there was a claim mm. about this, and he was holding young woman hostage at his house. I'm... Guys, it's just so heavy for me that I, I actually don't even know how to communicate about it. This is what happened. In the light of the report, Kenyatta and Aranika then uh, started the hashtag Mute R. Kelly hashtag in hopes of shutting down R. Kelly's concert in his hometown in Atlanta. Now, the concert went ahead regardless of their efforts, but soon after the campaign gained a bit of traction, uh, subsequently 10 of Kelly's concerts were cancelled. Now, it's not the very first time we hear of e these allegations. I can remember back as, as long as mm. I've known of R. Kelly that there were some sort of allegations about uh, sexual misconduct. So it is for almost two decades. Various women have taken the singer to court, accusing him of sexual misconduct, sexual assault, violation. More women are coming forward to talk about the alleged abuse. And that's why this year, uh, hashtag mute R. Kelly is in the spotlight. So you know the Time's Up campaign. Time's up. Time's up. Enough is enough. Mm. We're taking a stand against uh, uh, abuse, violation of abuse of power. And the campaign posted this statement on their Instagram page. Now, the post was meant to call on corporations who are making money off of the Pied Piper's music and venues hosting R. Kelly performances to cut ties with Robert Kelly and insist on putting the spotlight and doing something towards the safety and dignity of women. Um, look, the A-list Hollywood filmmakers and celebrities like Lupita Nyong'o, Viola Davis, Ava, what's her surname? Duvernay. Again? Duvernay. And uh, Kerry Washington as well. Um, and uh, John Legend also nice. came out in support of uh, hashtag mute R. Kelly. Some tweets online shared their support for the campaign like this. This is B. Rashad Beale who says, I am excited that black women's voices are finally being heard to mute R. Kelly. It's been a long time coming. And although the man can sing, he's been a predator. Listen to that word, mm -hmm. predator, for far too long. And I'd like to point out his songs as reasons why he needs to be canceled. Uh, but as it is on social media, not, uh, okay, I've got another one. Another two, actually. Uh, this is Darlene, lots of numbers. Uh, mute R. Kelly. Sh uh, R. Kelly should have been up and under the jail back in 94 yes. when he ran off and married a 15-year-old Aaliyah. Guys. And then uh, Robin Thede says, yes, I've said a thousand times, our creepy has to go. I'm not here for the discussions about separating the man from his music. I refuse to separate a man from his serial, ab serial abuse of black women. Black women and girls are valuable. Hashtag mute R. Kelly. Hashtag time's up. Hashtag woman of color. But not everyone's on board, as it happens on social media, you know. Um, look at these tweets. So it's Chutney says, y'all need to stop because as soon as Step in the Name of Love comes out on the next cookout, y'all gonna be stepping. Um, and then Joey M says, why are we just now starting this Mute R. Kelly movement? Is there new information? Last time I checked, he had his time in court and since then released six albums that performed quite well. No one said a word. Why now? Because of patriarchy, because of systemic violence and racism, you idiot. Anyway, because of the sorry. boys club as I well. Mean, come on, sorry, that tweet, just bring that up again. I got on a rant. Um, Ms. Beautiful says, I will say I will not stop listening to R. Kelly music. Famous people have been doing crazy somethings in their personal lives and y'all pick and choose who y'all want to go after. His personal life doesn't have anything to do with his music or artistry. Mm. That's that on that hashtag uh, mute R. Kelly. That sounds like someone who's never had her body violated by anyone else. <laughs> Be quiet. All right. Um, with show after show being cancelled, R. Kelly finally spoke out in his defense. And here is a nothing video of his nothing statement, but we can show it. Yo, what's up, y'all? It's your boy, Kells, man. And uh, 
First of all, I want to apologize to all my fans in Chicago and basically all around the world, wherever you know I'm performing at, and they cancel me. Um, I don't know why they canceled the show. Uh, I've never heard of a show being canceled because of rumors, but I guess it's the first time for everything, so I apologize to you guys. And in the meantime, I'm going to try to get to the bottom line of it, you know, uh, as far as my lawyers are concerned, and see exactly what happened and why I was canceled. Uh, until then, man, I love y'all, and I'll see y'all on the next. Uh, it sounds like he's apologizing for all the wrong reasons. Um, and it's kind of awkward now because recently Spotify announced that they will be removing R. Kelly from all their playlists in accordance with a new policy on hate content and hateful conduct effective immediately. That is going to be so interesting. How many songs that have the N-word in? Mm -hmm. How many songs that have the, the B-word word in? How many songs that are uh, just... Completely misogynistic. Mm. You know yeah. what I mean? You know, I'm, I'm thinking back... I'm thinking many, many things right now. First of all, um, I'm thinking back, there's, there's this song, uh, Too Close by Next. Mm. And if you go and actually listen to that, and that song goes in, right? Mm. But she's saying, step back, you're moving kind of close. And he's saying, no, 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 I'm still gonna move closer Ooh. to you. I'm still, you know what I'm saying? Mm. So, so things like that seep into our minds, seep into our mentality. That's then how we think everything is supposed to be. Of course. Right? Of that course. there is no uh, space for consent. Mm. Well, people like R. Kelly need to take the responsibility and know that they are, they, they are responsible for, for socializing um, a bit of America, whoever is listening to them. Whatever we're young men, who, um, whoever's in the club and listening yeah, to yeah, music, yeah. they're gonna think that's okay. Yeah. I feel like it's, it's not just like even just a set of people it's generation mm, mm, of people mm. it goes back to music from the 50s and 60s where men could come on to women and say but you're mine or i bought you a drink or and it's just disgusting culture that we need to get rid of mm. and not just say women you know protect yourselves but gents do better learn oh, better be better sad. people stop putting yourself onto people well, if you think about the power of words and mm. the power of the word and what we put out. I mean, you know, people are saying, Motivational Monday, use your mantra, you know, speak it into life, speak it into life. If we're saying, you know, smack my B mm. and my N this and, you know, do this, what are we speaking into life? Mm -hmm. And we wonder why there are situations with so much violence against women in our societies, particularly in this country. And I mean, we are complicit in this too. Yeah. We listen to the songs, we play the music, mm. we, you know, we post these videos of uh, little girls dancing inappropriately and creating a knock-on effect of you know bad behavior forgive me and well, what I really believe is by starving the root mm. we'll be able to take this power away so mm. so that's the thought that popped up as I was watching him right what is the point of not separating the man from the music mm. right so it's not only about the man it's mm. about the position that the man mm -hmm. is in it's that mm -hmm. power it's that money it's that influence that he's in right so if we take away his ability to make money and to lord power then we're able to take away some of what he's what he's able to but do bravado. right how yeah. he's able to do it Okay, so give us your opinions as well um, on what you think about the R. Kelly situation and if you in your life will be muting R. Kelly. That's it for that. It is now on to our other regular feature. Can we say this together? Yes. yes. One, two, one, two. That's, That's so savage. Have you ever been to church when the spirits of shade have you ever been to church when the spirits of shade just simply take over you and right there you feel, you feel that you must address an issue that you have with your ex-husband right in the middle of the people? That's exactly what happened to this lady. She was in church. This is what happened. And I know this is live. I know, yep, I'm talking to you, Rocha. I have to forgive you. I have to forgive you for what you did to my kids. I have to forgive you for what you did to me. I had to expose you to the enemy. Yeah, I did. God bless you. I'm free now. I'm free from sickness and disease. We definitely encourage us. She was literally spilling tea on her ex-hubby during a church service. How savage is this woman for exposing her ex-husband like that in front of people? But haven't you had that in at the table when your parents are, are, are praying over dinner and they go, please, Lord, help Nina 
to come back home early after school yeah. and yeah. stop yeah. running yeah. around yeah. with boys and this chicken is delicious. We thank you for it. Amen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Guys, exactly. it's Savage out there. This reminds me of another awkward situation when the Real Housewives of New York, the reality star, oh, Bethany Frankel, during her own talk show, live in front of her own audience, was having a word spat with Amorosa. Yeah, we have Kumbula of Apprentice fame, yes. Have a look at this interaction between the two women. Do you want celebrity Zen? You? I meant what I said. I think that you do have a career. I invited you here because you now... No, no, I don't think that you have a brand. I think that you are infamous. That's what I really think. I'm on the show because I want to give a point of view and let you give your point of view. I don't think you have a brand. I don't think I you mean, have you anything to cupcakes. show. cupcakes. I worked in the White House. Get a grip. What's your brand? Get I'd a like grip. You to tell us what... Ooh, Honey, you make cupcakes. I worked in the White House. Get a grip. Ooh. <laughs> oh, I'm versus quite scary yes, hardcore. um from the beginning of the apprentice before we found out who trump really was and we actually loved that show she was always full of spice always full of shade always infamous for her outbursts in interviews she had an altercation with our other problematic fave wendy <laughs> williams during an interview have a look at wendy v omarosa ding 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 yeah but there are celebrities who are not yeah now did you have a nose job no it looks like you had a nose job. No. Oh, okay. No, I mean, I just looked at before and after. Honey, before and after. Before and after pictures. But, but <laughs> if I can suggest, because the only thing that I've had done to my face is a little Botox, I would suggest for you some Restylane. The lines stay. That is fantastic. That's all we've got for Savagery. <laughs> but hey, if you want more Savagery, go to Twitter. Our local stars are at it. It's fantastic. But don't say anything. They'll go for you. Yo. With a straight face. Yeah. It's so real. Wow. I mean, I mean do you think that of... we'll ever have like that level of Savagery in South Africa? I think we, we have. do. We, we absolutely have. do. Yes. Not in real life. All right, guys. When we return, we're talking to Tubsy. Stay with us. <laughs> I hate it. 
I hate the fact that I gotta say this. I hate that all you see is girls naked. I hate the fact that you don't choose to see the hatred. Look, don't get me wrong. It makes me wanna fall in love. Sis. But not this year. Sis. <laughs> Wow. All Love right. It. Hello, we're back. You're watching Trending SA and a bit of Musa's Love Life on SABC3. Thank you so <laughs> much for your tweets, your posts, the whole shebang. You can keep tagging us with the hashtag Tsa on three. Now, tonight, a woman crush Wednesday is going to appear and sit right here. She is fresh, lovely, fabulous. She's a musician who broke into the music industry when she was featured on the anti-xenophobia song No More with proverb Questa Reason and Jay something back in 2015. But it was when she sang on the hook of Cuesta's hit, uh, that she made a mark on the Mzansi music industry and got us wondering who that is, yo. Fast forward three years, Topsy has solidified her name in the music industry with the best R&B soul reggae uh, album nomination at this year's South African right. Music Awards. So in the spirit of Women Crush One uh, Wednesday, what is happening? Shananas. In the spirit of Women Crush Wednesday, we're definitely crushing on her booming music career. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Tabsi. <laughs> Not again. Oh. <laughs> Bobby, why are you? I'm sorry, you are breathtaking, oh, Tubsy. Oh, Bobby. You really Can are. I say something so crazy. What? Right? My We're sister scared after last night. Sorry, my carry big on. My sister literally yesterday, like, we're on a phone call and she just randomly starts talking about you. No. And she's talking about you like we are both your homegirls. She goes, Aww. have you seen how hot Bobby Malloy is? Aww. Like, damn, she is. And she went on for like 10 minutes. As if like I was going to tell you. I didn't even know I was going to be on the show. <laughs> so now I have to tell you that she thinks that you're everything. We think that you're What's everything. her name? Bapiwe. Bapiwe. Yeah. Shout out Love to her. you, my darling. So listen, yeah. welcome to uh, Trending SA. It's so great to have you Thank here. Thank you for having me. I mean, I think that... that Questa song kind of exploded things, but I always know that it is years and years yeah. and years yeah. to make an overnight success. True. Talk us mm. through some of, <laughs> very, some very of the true. backstory. Yeah. Um, so as the old cliche goes, I've been singing since I was yee high. Yeah. I'm like yee high now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, music's kind of always been a part of my life. And when I moved up to Johannesburg for university, I that's kind of when the music bug bit. Yes. To kind of like explore it more. And I started doing backing vocals for like my upcoming friends who are like at, singing at pubs and bars and Marvel, weird Marvel restaurants. <laughs> and then by word of mouth, literally, um, I one day got a call from someone, uh, Donald's musical director. Oh, like, wow. Hey, we hear you are like a backing vocalist. Can you? And from there, I started singing with, you know, the likes of Donald, Proverb. Song, um, I, I did a show on Channel All called Stripped Down where I worked with like Casper mm. and Queen. Wow. And that's kind of how it grew. Oh. And that's that's basically. Wasn't it. RJ a part of that? Was he, or was it another um, one? I've worked with RJ before. Yes, but yeah. that's yeah. incredible. Nicely done. Cool. So we're Thank talking uh, behind the scenes, mm -hmm. and you told me you're investment banking. You yes, did that for I a while, but you to. started to call it quits yes. and follow music. Why such a bold step? Um, sure. I think so. What so what I did is after university when I graduated, I had to kind of go pay my dues and work in, in the corporate setting, and I just. That's when I really knew that this is not what I want to do. Okay. Like, I just knew this is not where I belong. And I, and I decided then and there that I'm going to do music full time. And I'm going to quit my job. And I didn't tell anybody because I didn't want anyone to deter me from my decision. Mm. So I made the decision. I literally only told my husband, quit my job. And then literally a month later, Krista gave me a call and said, hey, we're going to release a song. Wow. And then two months later, I'm on like the biggest song in the country. Sure. Lala, we all know black parents. <laughs> Great, heavy. you got nice hair, you got nice lashes, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but back from the ceiling, you are telling them that after you are leaving the corporate world to go and be a singer. What did, how did they take it? Who did you tell first? Do they know? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> or is this how um, you, they, you trick them with your, your, your corporate, corporate suit? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, nothing yeah. on it's underneath. It's like I'm paying homage <laughs> to my, the old me. Nice. Oh, I love it, I love it. Um, I'm kidding. Um, but yeah, my parents, and I'm really not trying to be nice because they might be watching, but they literally are the type of parents who let you do whatever nice. you want to do. 
they support you fully. And my mom and dad have known that I've always loved singing. I've annoyed them since I was yeah, I remember. Oh, so when I made that decision, they were so happy. I didn't tell them mm. off the bat. But when they kind of saw it happening, they were like, yay, we're happy. And they support me so much. And you've got the degree, so you can always go back. If yeah, you I can. When I you're can. bored. I mean, I never will. But I, mean, <laughs> I never will. Absolutely really never will. Structurally, mm -hmm. working in a freelance entertainment world is a completely different life to a structured kind of corporate yeah. environment. Talk us through a little bit of the, the, I don't know, maybe some of the ups and downs, some of the learnings mm. that you had mm. uh, trying to have a good life as an entertainer. Um, so I wish someone would have kind of like given me some sort of advice before mm. I decided to, to quit my job. But um, it was crazy because for me, I think for a lot of artists that decide to go solo, it's, it's kind of like it takes a while. For their for their rise, right? Yeah. I'm not saying I've risen, but mine was kind of very sporadic, and it was like I was on this really big song, and I didn't know what the hell I was doing. Oh wow! So it was very overwhelming. Last year for me was extremely overwhelming. Mm. Always on the road, never at home, um, getting used to people knowing who you are. It was very overwhelming. I just wish someone could have prepared me for that. But I absolutely loved the journey. But you don't phone us. We'll tell you what's <laughs> <laughs> Um I remember uh, bumping into you at Andici's yeah, after at the like Pop Awards. This was actually such an amazing moment. We're sitting there, we're eating pizza, we're celebrating this moment. Oh. You've just won the Hip Hop yes. Award and your song comes on oh, while we're oh, sitting was there. Wow. It was such a beautiful moment. <laughs> and um, I mean, that song with Cuesta was the one mm. that really just like, you know, put you onto the map. Yeah. Let's talk about that collaboration. Mm -hmm. All right. How did it come about and what was it like working with him? So the song that we recorded, Yes Felling Out, we recorded it a good, almost three years before it got released, right? Wow. Yeah. And it was one of those, I was in the studio working on my stuff, like just trying to figure out what I want to do in this music thing, but very low key and very, you know, chilled about it. And he was recording Dakar 2, the album that he's now released. And he was kind of leaving the studio, I was coming in, or it was the other way around. And he was like, oh yeah, we did that like No More song, whatever. Um, don't you want to just hop onto the song that I have, you know? But it's really like deep, so mm. you're gonna really need to dig deep <laughs> when you write the chorus. And we sat for a couple of hours, we did the song, it was really cool, really emotional. And then I think I just parked that in the back of my mind. I was, I think I'd graduated from Varsity, was working in corporate, but I didn't really think he'd release it. I mean, it's a slow, love jam yeah. rappers mm. are like hardcore mm. and it was like the second last song on the second disc you know what i'm saying so yeah. i didn't i didn't think he was gonna release the song but he did and i'm glad he did oh wow yeah. everything Speaking happens for love, a reason uh, mm -hmm. you got married in a private ceremony with like a hundred or so guests 400 of my closest <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot of you <laughs> and uh, you performed african queen Yes, I actually did my step to African Queen. Oh. Coming into the, yeah, it was, that was pretty cool. Mm, so tell us about what that meant and what that song means to you. Um, I love African Queen so much, the song, because I just really want to celebrate girls that look like me, you know, mm. and really make a song for girls. That blonde look girls. Like me. Yeah. So, because <laughs> <laughs> blondes have more fun. <laughs> um, and yeah, so when I made the song, I really just wanted it to be a girl anthem, you know, just for like African sisters to feel really nice. awesome. Mm. And it was so beautiful and such a fitting song for me to kind of, you know, do my step to that. And it just worked. And it, yeah, it's pretty cool. I don't think a lot of people can say they've literally like walked into the church with their own song. No, mm. no. Yeah. Lala, um, then you got married. Beautiful, absolutely yes. stunning. And then after your marriage, your wedding, after your wedding, not after your marriage, mm -hmm. after your wedding, Wapala <laughs> in Goma called Cry, and the, it's an open letter to your uh, ex-boyfriend. Why are we still talking and writing about our ex-boyfriends? You just got married. No, so the timelines are all messed up. Okay. <laughs> Cry I wrote like four or five years ago. Ah. Yes, when I was kind of coming out of that terrible relationship and I started writing my album four or five years ago and I was using my album as like therapy to kind of get okay. through the breakup. Mm. Okay. So Cry I wrote a very long time ago. I don't know why people are faffing over it now because I, I mentioned this a long time ago that Cry was about my ex, mm. Cry was about, it was my first single that I released yonks ago. Mm. Um, but I don't know why people, because like a lot of people have- How does your husband feel? Does he get touched? Does he get annoyed? No, does he want to know who his ex is? is? so secure in who he is. Is he sexy, Oof, your husband? Lovely. He's very sexy. He is. You guys need to see him with his shirt off. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> um, so 2018 has been good to you. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you're already working on... Uh, are there, there's people getting excited here in the studio. Um, your debut album, Songs About yes. You, um, it's already got a salmon nod. Mm. Uh, you yeah. are up in the genre. Um, what's the inspiration behind it? So Songs About You 
um, like I said, it was it's, it's kind of a journey through the past four or five years. Mm. I was going through a terrible breakup and then I found love again. And this, mm. the album kind of does that. It's like very somber and sad at the beginning, but then it picks up and I have songs like African Queen, which celebrate love and being mm. in love. Um, and so it's just literally my personal story. It's mm. like, here's how to get to know Tutsi. Mm. Yeah. I like that. What does the nomination um, mean to you? Everything. Oh, really? Especially because I didn't expect it. Yeah. Nice, I never, nice. And I got three nominations, by the way, oh guys. My God. Oh, my God. Three nominations. So one for Best Newcomer, one for Best Soul in R&B, and then Record of the Year with Chris. Congratulations. Which is That's so really, amazing. really dope. Lala, yeah. what's, what's next for you? You know Tina's about Dala, so obviously, we're talking about Uchatile. Next thing, Tina's about your grandchildren. We don't have any more. What's next for you, Lala? So no kids anytime soon. Okay. But music-wise, um, I'm going to release a couple more singles from my from my album, Songs About You, and then work on some new new material. But I'm doing a lot of features now. Like, okay. I just love working with other musicians. Yeah. It's my favorite thing to do in the wide world. So while I'm taking a break on my own stuff, I'm going to just kind of collaborate, collaborate, collaborate. Nice. All right, so we like to play some games. Okay. Um, and so we're going to play a quick game with you. And it is called Guess the Song Via the Hum. Okay. Because yeah, none of us can sing except for Musa and Kuli and, and um, Pabi. And Nina. And so, none of us. so we're going to hum and you have to guess the song because you see the title is Guess, guess the, the Song Via the Hum. Got it. Okay, so I will begin. <coughs> I'm in love with the shape of you. Yeah! Yay! That is her Wow, she is. Push and pull like a magnet. Yeah! Open my heart is falling too. I don't know, that was good. It was really good. That was, that was, that was good. Let's slow it down like a lot. Yeah! It's a church song. If there's ever a summer for humming, <laughs> bring it. I'm telling you. All right, who's cool. next? Okay, so it goes like this. Oh. <laughs> go, Nina, go. Oh, where's Hama then a singer? Release me, release my body. <laughs> oh, man. Wait, I have it. Yes, you do. Keep going. Gosh, Three, I know this song. Why is it not? Two, one, so I know the song. Three, Three, uh, uh, oh, okay, no, I didn't. I didn't Were you anywhere close to that, Tabsy? No, no, no. But you know what? Uh, you, it was just me. You're pretty good. <laughs> sure, this song. My goodness, what's happening in this video? Sure. Oh my okay, who's next? Who's next? Sorry, I'm just shocked by this music video. My goodness. Yeah. I know we are late hours of the night, but jeez, like it. All right, anyway. Are you ready for mine? Yes, I am. <coughs> Dilemma. Kelly uh, Rowland and Nelly. What time are you? Yes! Oh, I love this song. Oh, Hey. <laughs> You know what, guys, we're all wearing glasses. Yeah. Like, you know, okay. a thing. Right, Kuli's turn now. Okay, yeah. so well done. You've so far got two out, out of three. three. One more to go. Let's go, Tabsy. She knows it. Tied up with string. These are a few of my favorite <laughs> things. I haven't finished. <laughs> <laughs> When the dog flies at, I still remember my favorite things, and then I don't feel so sad or bad. We're not sure. I almost said bad, and then something. I thought it was bad, and then she said sad. I thought it was bad. Second verse sad. Bad and bad. Come see everybody, the African Queen. Delight. Thank you Thank very you much for, for being here me. tonight. A All right. Four young women mm. who aspire to be artists make you their poster girl. Oh, mm. oh my gosh. It's time for a quick break. This is Trending SA on SABC. <laughs>
Well, what is up on WhatsApp today? It's all about Childish Gambino. He broke the internet with his new music video for a song titled, This is America. And since then, the video has gained so many views on YouTube. I'm talking about 100 million. Yo, mm. So because it is so popular, the people here in Zanzi decided to give it a remix, a, 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 a remix. Check it out. Amazing. Mm. Joining us here on SABC3, we'll be back again for our Thursday throwback edition tomorrow night, 10.30 p.m. right here on SABC3. We love you so much. Look after yourselves. Look after your hearts. Sazo, I'm not, 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 Sazo, I'm not,